If you live in a home with kids or pets and you've got carpet, chances are you're going to need a carpet cleaner at some point in your life. I'm Erin from TechGadgetsCanada.com and sure you can rent them from the grocery store or hire a pro, but that's both a hassle, time consuming and it can be expensive. Having a carpet cleaner at home is actually a great way to tackle small messes before they turn into bigger and more plentiful set-in stains. That's the idea behind the Tyneco Carpet One Smart Carpet Cleaner. In this review, I'll take a look at what this device can do, how it works, how well it actually cleans, and if you stick around with me, I'll tell you if I can recommend it for you. An early heads up, if you end up liking this video and finding it helpful, to please hit that like button and consider becoming a subscriber. Both those things do help me keep making more videos that I hope everyone out there can watch, enjoy, and learn from. This device comes in a large box and it looks big and intimidating with lots of parts, but it's really not. Let's see what you get as you unpack here. There is a handle inside, naturally you're going to need that. There's also a cleaning brush, which you might want to use for cleaning out the dirty water tank. There is the requisite instruction booklet and hey, there's a bottle of carpet cleaning solution right in here. Very handy. The vacuum unit inside here is kind of big and heavy and awkward and it is definitely well wrapped and well packed. It will just need that handle clicked into place once you do get all the wrapping off. The dirty water tank arrives detached from the machine and it too will just clip into place on the base. There is also an accessory head and hose in another of these boxes here and that comes with two different nozzle heads. With everything put together, you'll note there's power buttons on the handle and a port to add that accessory hose into the top of the cleaner head. There's also a small filter in here to trap hair and debris and you get an extra one included in the box, so make sure not to throw it away. The cleaner has two wheels and a large single beater brush underneath. That middle roller looking device looks to me like where the solution gets sucked back inside and there is a humidity sensor nub and we'll get to what that's all about in a little bit. You can wind the cord up in the rear using the loops and there is a step lever to recline the cleaning head as well as another step lever to unhitch the dirty water tank too. There is heated air drying in here somehow too to speed up dry time and we'll get to that as well. Finally, there is a digital display with Tyneco's dirt monitoring loop light, the eye loop sensor. The idea here is that it will turn red when it's picking up more dirt and blue during regular cleaning. The display will also show you any messages related to your cleaning. The setup process for this carpet cleaner is really straightforward. First, you'll add two capfuls of the included cleaning solution into the clean water tank, then you'll fill it with clean water. Lock that into place, and Tyneco, by the way, says you need to use cool or warm water and that hot water should not be used. Plug in your machine and you're ready to start cleaning. In auto mode, the cleaner will start working when you recline it. In other modes, you may need to hit the power button. One quick mention here, oddly, in my opinion, this device has Wi-Fi and you can connect it to the Tyneco app. Now the app is supposed to allow you to perform all the same tasks, only with the app, I guess you'd need one hand to operate the vacuum and the other to hold your phone. I was actually not able to connect the vacuum to my phone since it doesn't appear to support dual band or 5G Wi-Fi. Since I wasn't really that excited about it in the first place, I don't feel like I was missing out on a special feature. Now to get back to the cleaning. Naturally, you should probably vacuum first before you do your carpet cleaning, just to keep things like excess hair and fibers from clogging up the machine. You can of course pre-treat areas with a high intensity carpet cleaning solution first if you like as well. When I started my testing, I just used water and Tyneco's cleaner. The machine is going to spray that water and cleaner solution when you push the vacuum forward, then suck up the solution and the dirt on the backwards pull. For that reason, you'll want to use this machine slowly and deliberately. I used the Tyneco Carpet One Smart Carpet Cleaner on my 15 year old basement carpets, which I thought were in need of replacing due to several mysterious stains which had grown over the years despite a lot of vacuuming and cleaning. Now this is likely what's called filtration soiling, where carpets essentially act as a filter for the air which passes from the room into the walls or through gaps in your baseboards. 
In the past, only professional cleanings have made these filtration stains go away. We also had lots of mystery spots and spills following a major renovation in the house. Now, I opted to tackle one of the filtration stains first and I didn't know what to expect. I took a couple of passes and not much change to be honest, but I was also still finding my way with this new machine. Once I kind of got the hang of it, I did a few more passes and I started to see some improvement. These areas are quite soiled and past spot cleaning has really done nothing against them. As you can see in the before and afters, it made a difference to this area, but it wasn't perfect. So I opted to add some special cleaner and then went over the area again. This helped a lot and I was actually really happy with the end result. I repeated this process on two other areas of really deep staining. Again, it took a few cleaning passes, but these areas came really clean. Now, I didn't get them 100% clean, but truthfully, neither did the pro carpet cleaning I had done last time either. I'd call these about 95 to 98% of the way clean, and either way, math aside, I'm really happy with the results. On that particular area, I'd say the Tyneco carpet one easily did as good a job as a professional cleaner. Next up, I wanted to clean these unknown dark spots that appeared after our renovation that I actually suspected might be glue. So I added a pre-treater and then waited the appropriate amount of time for that to penetrate, then ran the Tyneco over them. To my surprise, they came completely clean. To wrap things up, I decided to spill some coffee on the carpet to see what would happen with a fresh stain. With really just one pass, the Tyneco had all the liquid up and out of the carpet fibers. The bottom line for me was that this cleaner definitely transformed my carpets from needs replacement now to I can keep them in place a while longer. The Tyneco Carpet One has three cleaning modes and I guess perhaps four if you count using the accessory hose. And in those main cleaning modes, Tyneco says it uses heated wash technology where a heating panel ensures that the water temperature is going to remain consistent throughout your cleaning cycle. There's also a humidity sensor which will detect carpet dampness in real time and it'll show you the dryness level of the carpet through the dryness meter on the LED screen. So let's dig into these three modes. In auto mode, the vacuum and the sensor will detect dirt levels and Tyneco says it'll automatically adjust the water volume and the suction for you. Max mode is kind of full power, I guess, and it increases the water and cleaner volume to 100% to power out tougher stains. Then there is dry mode, which increases the suction power to get not just the dirt out, but to get more of that residual water too. At the same time, the device will increase warm airflow underneath for faster carpet drying. Now, I wasn't clear if the dry mode meant that no water was being used and it's just drying and suctioning, or if the water is actually minimized. I do feel like the machine did a good job at drying. The carpets were left damp, certainly, but they weren't soaked and they were dry in a few hours. Tyneco likes to tout its eye loop sensor, which is supposed to change the light color, the LED light ring there, based on the dirt that it's detecting. I'm not sold on this. It seems to detect things only intermittently in my testing of it on various Tyneco machines. It often didn't change when tackling a particularly dirty area like my coffee stain, but it did when rolling over the carpet cleaner foam. For me, this sensor seems more like a needless gimmick since the machine is really quite effective all on its own and I also have eyes that can see where the extra dirty areas are all on my own. Next up, let's look at using the accessory hose. This hose can help you get into smaller areas or do things like upholstery or maybe even curtains. I decided to use it on my vintage sofa and a vintage chair. The hose has kind of a trigger that shoots the water and cleaning solution in a spray from underneath the cleaner head. It shoots a lot of water, so be warned. I think I oversaturated my cushion a bit. My recommendation is to hold the sprayer back to try and lighten the mist a bit then stop pulling on the trigger and then pull the vacuum head over the area. For me, it didn't seem like it was sucking up a lot of the moisture. And indeed, when I felt the suction from the hose, it was actually quite low in my opinion. I stuck some paper to it just to see how strong it was and it really didn't seem like it was pulling in very much air or water. My cushion was left quite damp, but it did dry eventually. I tried it on another chair where you can see how much saturation it gets. 
Again, this did dry after several hours, but I felt like the cleaning was only marginal. And after all of my testing, I'm not sure the accessory hose is as effective as the rest of the vacuum. It may go without saying, but you should clean up your carpet cleaner after each session in order to keep it from smelling bad and to ensure it has a long life. You need to empty the dirty water tank after every use and give it a wash and a scrub with the included scrub brush. You'll also want to flip the cleaner over and clear out any tangles or fibers that have ensnared that roller brush underneath. Finally, unclip the brush roller cover and give that a clean as well, particularly on the inside where things like pet hair can accumulate. Overall, the Tyneco Carpet One Smart Carpet Cleaner has earned a place in my partially carpeted home here. It cleaned carpets that I legitimately thought were uncleanable without some kind of professional help. It powered away tough stains and filtration soiling, and I feel like it did as good a job as a previous professional carpet cleaning has for me. Downsides? Well, the unit is large and kind of heavy, but it kind of needs to be. If you do need to make it more compact, the handle can be removed for storage or transport. It's also loud while it's cleaning, but then again, it kind of needs to be. The biggest downside for me, I guess, is that the accessory hose didn't seem to work as well as the rest of the machine in my cleaning testing. But in all honesty, I would buy it for its carpet abilities alone. The Tyneco Carpet One Smart Carpet Cleaner sells for about $499 US dollars, and I haven't yet seen the Canadian availability or the pricing just yet. If you want to read this review or reference any of what I've talked about here, you can head over to techgadgetscanada.com where I've got a full write-up. There you can ask me any questions you have about this carpet cleaner. You can also, of course, post them here in comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Erin. Until the next time, you can find me on either Twitter or Instagram. I'm at ErinLYYC. You can also always catch me on Facebook at facebook.com slash techgadgetscanada.